This video is gonna be for troubleshooting a no start or hard start on a two stroke ATV and it even applies to a dirt bike in a lot of uh, situations. 90% uh, of the time it's gonna be only a handful of problems, about three or four different problems, but it can get very, very technical later on. So I'm just gonna cover the basics of that 90% of what the problem usually is. Um, on a two stroke quad or dirt bike, um, if it's not oil injected, you need to make sure you have gas in it. Uh, a lot of times, somehow the gas will leak out of the carbs due to the float being set wrong or something like that, or there being sand in it. So it all leaks out, and then you pull your quad out, and you remember you put it away with a full tank of fuel, and then when you pull it out, you know, three months later when it's nice out, it won't start. Well, you need to make sure there's fuel in it. You need to make sure that the fuel is mixed properly. Um, fuel mixture can actually change your jetting. If you mix a fuel with at 40 to 1 is what you set the bike up for and everything like that, and then you mix it at 50 to 1, you are actually going to make it run richer. The reason for that is it changes the fuel to air ratio by adding more or less oil. When there's less oil, there's going to be more fuel with the same amount of air. So that's gonna cause a rich condition and vice versa. If you change the um, ratio to 32 to one or 36 to one or something like that, it's gonna actually make the bike run leaner. So if you jet the bike to run at 40 to one, make sure you run it at 40 to one. So first of all, make sure that there is fuel in it. Um, The things that you need in order for an engine to run are fuel, which in my opinion is fuel and fuel air mixture. Um, you're also going to need spark, you're going to need timing, and you're going to need compression. Um, the first thing I'm talking about is fuel. Um, you have to make sure you have fuel in it, make sure the fuel is on, make sure that your fuel vent isn't clogged. If your bike won't run and you think maybe it's not getting fuel, there's fuel in the tank, but it's not getting to the carburetor, there could be a pressure problem where the, it creates like a vacuum in the gas tank because your vent's clogged, so air can't come in to take the place of the fuel. So if you crack your uh, fuel cap open and then it runs fine, then you know you have a clogged fuel cap and you need to get a new one, new vent. So then from there, fuel comes down through the fuel tube into the carburetor. In a Banshee's case, it actually tees off and splits. Um, it's a really good idea, in my opinion, to get a inline fuel filter. I'm gonna do a video on that install. It's really simple to do. You can buy one at any auto, auto parts store. Clip the line, throw it in there, and it works wonders. It keeps all the sand out, everything like that. You can make sure that fuel is getting down into the line, and therefore you know it's getting down into the carburetor. Um, from there, it goes down and goes past the valve that is opened and closed by the float. Um, on that valve is a little plastic tip on it and that valve can get uh, corroded and stuff like that and it can actually seize shut. Uh, that's very rare but um, from there the fuel floats past the float which if your float height is set wrong that could also cause a no start if the fuel can't pick up or there's no fuel in it at all if the float's stuck. So you need to make sure that fuel is getting all the way into the float bowl. If it's overflowing out of the float into the overflow tube, then either your float height is set wrong or that valve that the float opens and closes isn't sealing. So you need to make sure you take your car carb apart, clean it, make sure your floats are moving, make sure that they're adjusted properly, put it back together, and it shouldn't leak. Um, one common trick people do, if it does leak, you can give it a tap with like a rubber mallet or something like that, and hopefully it'll jostle that float enough to where it'll seal. Um, from there, the float get, or the fuel gets sucked up into the carburetor from the compression of the engine and goes through your reed valves. Um, it goes through your reed valves and doesn't go back. The reeds are a one-way valve, so the fuel goes in there, the fuel, oil, and air goes in there and then can't come back out. That's the whole point of a reed valve, and they're required for a two-stroke engine. So if your reed valves are cracked or stuck open or are not sealing, that will also cause a no start. From there, the fuel gets sucked in, goes down to the bottom of the crank area, and then when the piston goes down, it sucks the fuel and air back up into the top to be compressed. Um, that's pretty much the end of the fuel route. 
So really the simple things are cap, on off switch, make sure your fuel is getting to the float or getting to the float bowl. <clears throat> make sure that your reed valves are intact and your air filter as well. Sometimes you could get, uh, if you you know just bought a quad, you can't figure out why it started, take it all apart. Check inside here because sometimes you can get mouse nests, you can get really bad corrosion, you can get all kinds of stuff in there. So take your air filter off and check and make sure that your air filter is functioning and in place and make sure that you have open air passage all the way through the carburetor and you can see the reed valves when you have the throttle open and you pull that slide out of the way. Another thing that falls under that fuel air category is your jets. That includes your idle jet and your main jet. Those are the two that you switch the most, that are used the most. Your idle jet's gonna control anywhere from zero throttle up to about a quarter throttle. Um, that's called your pilot jet. Your pilot jet needs to be in a ballpark within about one or two jets of where it needs to be in order for it to run. If it's way too rich or way too lean and the quad won't run, and it'll be extremely difficult to start it. And if you do get it started, you won't be able to get it to idle. So you need to go on to forums or ask someone that's knowledgeable with the quad and with the mods and everything like that about what size you need. On the Banshee, if you're going to have stock pipes, I believe it's a 25 pilot jet you'll want. As soon as you upgrade anything past stock pipes, then you want a 27.5, 27 and a half. And that, once again, depends on your mods, depends on your altitude, depends on the temperature outside, depends on a whole bunch of things. If you guys have any questions, uh, make sure you list all the mods, whether or not you have an airbox, whether or not you have an airbox lid, what uh, air filter you have, what pipes you have, what size carburetor you have. If you guys want to ask me a question, feel free, but I need to know all the details about the bike in order to get an in accurate guess on what kind of jet you're going to need. Um, I'm going to do a whole separate video on jetting. I, you know, someone can't tell you exactly what jets you need. Every quad's going to run different. Every quad's going to have different compression. You need to figure it out on your own. You need to figure out the art of jetting if you want to stick with ATVs and be good at it. All right, so you got to have those two ballpark jets in the same area. You know, it doesn't have to be exact on in order for the quad to run. From there, you fine tune it to get it to run properly. Um, with my mods, I'll list them in the description, but I have a 27.5 Pilot, as I mentioned, and then I'm running a 300 main right now, I believe. It's either 290 or 300. I'm actually going to do a, a plug chop video as well to show you guys on how to tune the carburetor. All right, so that pretty much covers everything under the fuel-air mixture section. Next thing I'm going to do is compression. Uh, the two main ways that people check, check compression is with a compression tester, which you unscrew or you pop off your coil, unscrew your spark plug, screw your compression tester on, hold the bike wide open throttle, and then kick it over about five or six times or until the compression tester stops moving. This is a compression tester I picked up at Harbor Freight. I think it was like 20 or 30 bucks. But basically it's got a bunch of different size uh, fittings on there. I believe this is the one for the Banshee. So basically, you just screw that into the uh, spark plug hole. You're going to screw that into the end of the adapter. And then this is a quick disconnect on this side. So you just use the quick disconnect, pop it onto the gauge right there, hold it wide open throttle so you can get full air movement through there, and then kick it over until the needle won't raise anymore. Usually it's about five or six kicks. Um, Everybody's going to have their different opinion on what it should be and what they like and all that kind of stuff. From my experience, anything below about 90 PSI, then the quad's not going to run. I've seen it run as low as 70, 76 on one of the blasters I built. But anything below 90, it's going to start backfiring and have, you know, really be hard to start and all that sort of thing. Um, depending on your mods, your compression is going to be needs to stay above about 100, 110 in my opinion. Once again, that depends on your mods, your altitude, all that kind of stuff. I'm not trying to start an argument, but due to my experience, that's what I'm saying. Um, some compression, you get up to 150, 160, and some of the high-built motors, even a little bit higher than that. Um, I believe mine's around 125, 130. Uh, this is a fresh top end, and I just have a head shave. That's the only thing that's going to change the uh, compression on this. So... You need to have compression above 90. I'd recommend to get a rebuild around 100 or 110, right around there, um, to get it bored and honed, just so that you don't go out to ride a weekend and then lose your compression all of a sudden 
and then you're screwed out of riding. That way you have it done ahead of time. You don't have to worry about it anymore. Um, the other form of checking your compression is not checking the upper seal of the engine, but the lower seal. And that's done through a leak down test. With a leak down test, you take off the exhaust, cap off the exhaust so it seals, and then actually pressurize the engine through the spark plug. Um, I've, I've never done it before. I'd like to do it, and I'm going to buy the kit and uh, do a how-to video on it. But it's going to check your crank seals on both sides, stator side and clutch side. It's going to check your reed valves to make sure your reed valves are um, closing completely. And then it's going to check your lower gaskets as well as your upper gaskets. And I think that, I don't, don't know, once again, don't quote me on this, but I think that it has to hold around 5 or 6 PSI for about 10 minutes or so. If your you know, pounds drop before that, then usually that's a pretty good indication. You have a, a significant leak and you need to, to check it out and find out where that leak is. So those are your two things for compression. If you do have... Uh, leak somewhere then you need to fix it before you ride because any leak is going to cause a lean condition because it's going to allow extra air into the engine where it shouldn't be so anytime you have a leak you need to fix it as soon as possible um, some common leak sites on banshees and blasters are the head gasket which is right around here a loose spark plug can cause a leak um, the gasket for your reed valves that goes around right here on both sides that can cause a leak your bottom cylinder gasket which is right here on both sides that can cause a leak um, the actual seal for the top and bottom half of the cases as well as the right and left half for a blaster in the cases that can leak as well those are the common sites also anything uh, any of these um, bands right here if those aren't tightened then extra air can leak in there or leak in there and can also cause a lean condition. So that's probably, that's definitely the number one cause of an engine running lean and blowing up is leaks. So make sure you don't have any leaks. The last thing I'm going to cover is electrical. Um, in my opinion, electrical is by far the most difficult to diagnose, by far the most difficult to fix. Um, the way I've always done it is if I have an electrical problem, I just replace stuff from cheapest to most expensive. I know that that's not the way most people would recommend it, but I don't have any of the testers. I don't have a whole lot of electrical background. Um, I'm not really sure how to use the testers, and until I learn how, that's probably the way that I'm going to stick with doing things. Some of the things that I've learned um, as far as figuring out electrical problems is you can uh, throw a new set of plugs on. They're two bucks each. Really easy to do. Make sure they're gapped properly. Um, the coil. Uh, coils, I think, run 20 or $30. If you find a good used set, you can replace that fairly cheap. Um, also, your switches can go bad. Your on-off switch, your um, key, if you just unplug your key um, down inside where the wire harness is, it bypasses it. If you have a tether, make sure your tether is wired in properly and working. Your switch, your run switch, all of those can cause electrical nightmares. Also, you need to make sure it's grounded. Um, the ground on the Banshee, I believe, is up front on the blaster. It's up under here where the coil mounts. I think on the Banshee it's up there, and it's usually a black wire. Um, also, on the Banshee, some of the wires, the wires are actually tucked away on mine, but if they come down, they can actually touch the pipe and melt and then ground out on the pipe. So if you're having an intermittent electrical problem or intermittent no start, then it could be um, grounding out wires somewhere. Uh, if you check out your coil and your coil is okay, you check out your wire harness, everything's intact, nothing's rubbed out, nothing's uh, grounded out, nothing's you know corroded or anything like that, you have all good electrical connections and it still won't start, then you're going to want to look into your voltage regulator or your CDI box, which are both underneath the hood up here on the Banshee and on the Blaster they are as well. Um, if those check out okay, I'm not sure how to test them once, I, once again. Um, but if those are okay, then you're going to want to look into your stator. Um, your best bet is to buy a manual. Check out all the specs with your stator. Make sure it's gapped properly. Um, with timing, um, the only thing that really can go wrong with a two-stroke as far as timing is if your flywheel key, or, key shears. And the flywheel key just keeps time with the spark and the piston. And so if that 
breaks, then your your piston won't spark or your spark plug won't spark when the piston's in the proper spot. So if you have an intermittent spark problem, or sometimes it'll sputter, and sometimes it'll run and then it'll stop, um, it's a good chance that your flywheel key is sheared. Um, some other things that it could be that are very very rare is if your exhaust somehow gets plugged. If there's a like a mouse nest or somehow a whole bunch of corrosion or if you somehow get water in it and then it parked the quad and then it freezes in the pipe overnight well you're that affects compression your engine won't be able to push any of the old uh, exhaust out therefore it won't run uh, how the choke is used um, if you know your quad is tuned properly when a quad is tuned properly the only time you'll have to use the choke is when the engine is cold and when I say cold, that means that it hasn't been started in like a few hours, if not a couple days. Um, what the choke does is it allows the carburetor to pull a little bit more fuel into the combustion chamber, into the engine, to get a little bit more likely for it to spark. Um, what I do is I always start the quad when I haven't started in a while with full choke, get it started, and as soon as it starts and I get it running, then I flip it back down to half choke to just slide it in a little bit. Leave it there for about two, three minutes, let it warm up a little bit, and then get it to idle with no choke. And then I just slowly give it a little bit of gas here and there until idle on its own. Uh, if you have any questions for me, feel free to ask. Uh, send me a PM or comment on this video. I'll offer the best advice I can, and if I can't give you the answer you're looking for, I'll try to find it for you and get back with you. Uh, if you have any video requests, feel free to ask me. Uh, feel free to send me a message. Ask me what details you want included in it, and I'll be more than happy to put a video together. I have a couple videos coming up. I'm going to do um, finish that blaster build over there. Uh, that's in a, putting all the electronics together right now. I still got to put the exhaust on and a few miscellaneous parts here and there. Um, also, I'm going to do a video on how to do wheelies, and I got a couple other ideas coming up here that I'd love to share with you guys. So uh, please give me your feedback. Let me know what you think, and see you guys soon.